morning. I want to share an observation with you. It's something I've been pondering for a while. And the conclusion I'm coming to is that as the people of God, we need to be far more humble. And we need to be a lot more grateful. And we need to seek the Father a whole lot more. And there's a couple of Bible examples um, that that really speak on this. In the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, we see Abraham is said by God to be a righteous man because he believed. It's credited to him as righteousness. It's not entirely clear how righteous Lot is. However, when the visitors are coming by to see if the outcry coming up from Sodom and Gomorrah is as great as, as what is heard, Abraham pleads for, <laughs> for Sodom and Gomorrah, the whole city. And he says, are you going to destroy the city on account of if there's this many righteous people, will you spare it? And, and he keeps negotiating until he gets down to, I think, 10 people. So Sodom and Gomorrah will be spared if 10 righteous people can be found. And it never says if any righteous people were found, but Lot and his wife and his two daughters were spared, at least until they got to a certain point and Lot's wife looked back and then there were only three that wound up being saved. But it doesn't say that Lot was a righteous person and yet he could certainly look at the people around him and say, well, I'm more righteous than this. But would he have been spared if it were not for, for Abraham and on, on account of Abraham? There's no evidence to say that he would have been. And there are certainly um, more righteous people than that who have not been spared because of where they were. We'll leave that to, to Yahweh to sort out and to decide what should and shouldn't be done. That's not the, the purpose of this talk. But just to look at the fact that he could have been quite arrogant about the whole thing and said, well, I may not be perfect, but I'm a whole lot better than them. And maybe he was. Maybe he was. I'm not saying he wasn't. But then we look to an even more powerful example in the flood. The only person that is mentioned as being um, righteous in the Lord's eyes, and that doesn't mean he was the only one, but it does mean he's the one that's mentioned, is Noah. And yet his wife was also saved, which, you know, hopefully she was righteous also. His three sons and their wives were saved. And we see after the flood that Ham was apparently not entirely righteous. So he, he, there, was, there was some cause for concern there. And as far as the other two, we don't know. But you would think that, you know, a person could look around and say, wow, the whole world is being destroyed but we're being saved, the eight of us. We are the elite, we are the elect, we are God's chosen. And they could have gotten very haughty about it. They could have gotten very arrogant. And maybe they did, I don't know. I don't know, we know that uh, Noah spent, I think over a century building the ark. Maybe he needed some help and maybe Having helped build the ark, it wasn't right that they should be lost. I don't know. Maybe it was just on Noah's account that they were saved because they were, um, because that is what's mentioned, is that they're, they're his sons and the wives of those sons. Maybe, um, you know, maybe Yahweh's plan to repopulate the earth was through these four couples. And it wasn't that they were the, the four best examples, you know, Noah was chosen and his wife was a shoe in and his three sons were also uh, saved. But 
in the modern times and, and since then, there's been countless examples of times when people don't necessarily know why they're in the situation they're in. Um, you could look at the inverse. You could look at Job. And Job uh, went through what he went through because he was uh, blameless before the Lord, which seems really ironic. And yet we, we see a bit of, of God's thinking towards the end there. And we, we gain some understanding there and some insight into the mind of, of Jehovah. And so the point though, and it's very simple, be humble. <laughs> don't, don't think that you were, were spared from something because you're more righteous and don't think you necessarily went through something um, because you did something wrong exactly. Uh, Yeshua speaks about um, some tragedies that happen to people because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't say, but people were talking about it and apparently saying, hey, you know, did the tower in Siloam fall on these people? Did Pilate mix these people's blood with their offerings because they were more unrighteous or more sinful? And Yeshua says, no, no, but unless you repent, you, you know, you too will meet the same sort of fate in, in some sort of way. Um, it should give us pause, you know, we should seek him and know what he's really doing and know the reason we're going through what we're going through if we can, if we can discover it. But in all things, be humble and be grateful. Lot and, and his wife and his two daughters should have been grateful because by, by all rights, it seems like they should have been swept away with the rest of the city. And only Lot's wife was, was swept away and she, she had her chance. And it may seem harsh, but instructions are instructions and sometimes that's the way it goes. Likewise with the flood, all eight of them should have been very humbled by the, the situation because even Noah probably wasn't perfect. Um, you know, he was obedient, but he wasn't probably perfect. And none of the other seven, do we have any indication whatsoever that the Lord was pleased with them? Other than they got to be saved too, and that was by relation to Noah. So we should be very careful to be grateful and to be humble about all things and to seek the Lord. Shalom, shalom. Just some food for thought. We'd love to hear from you. Please write to us at disciplesofcana at gmail.com.